What's going on, people? Welcome back to On The Ball and welcome back to another preview show. And I just want to wish everyone out there who's watching the video a very Merry Christmas if you're watching this on Christmas Day when it is going to be out. But... We, even though it is Christmas, football never stops and there's a full host of fixtures in midweek for Boxing Day and uh, all the festival of football. So we will be previewing every single result for midweek. If you don't know how the scoring works in this game, me and Ben um, both predict every single score uh, of the Premier League rounds. So you get five points for exactly uh, for a correct uh, scoreline, one point for a correct result. And me and Ben both pick a star man for each week. Once you pick that man, you cannot pick them again for the rest of the season season and if they score a goal you get five points if they get an assist you get two points but Ben is not with us today so in as a substitute we have the great Brian Daigle in the house today uh gonna help us preview the weekend's results and I'm sure he'll give some of his predictions as well so um but without further ado let's get straight into the predictions and the first result we uh, were um, game we will be predicting is Newcastle at home to Nottingham Forest at St James's Park I have predicted 1-1 Ben has predicted 2-0. Um, the reason I've predicted 1-1 is, first of all, Newcastle, again, picking up more injuries on the weekend. They really are threadbare at the moment, albeit they do have a fantastic home record. I think they've won seven and lost one of their um, eight home games. But the reason I've predicted a draw is because Nuno he is in his uh, you know honeymoon period potentially at Forest. They did get uh, they although he lost his first game three to at home to Bournemouth, they definitely showed a lot of signs of fight and um, he, uh, a lot of Forest fans were quite happy with the performance in how they and how they played. And I see thing and I also think Newcastle do tend to struggle sometimes against teams who sit back and make things difficult for them and try and hit them on the transition and uh, struggle to break them down sometimes. So I think Forest might try and do that. So um, I feel like in, uh, Nuno could go to St. James's Park and in one of his first games get a credible draw. Ben has gone for 2-0 to Newcastle, though. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to justify his scoreline, but what, 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 where, how do you see this going, Brian? Um, yeah, listen, I, Newcastle, St. James's Park, they're going to be banging for blood. They're, they're, they're going to want it. If there's a stadium that can get up for it, St. James's Park, um, I'm going to kind of meet in the middle and say 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, two, one. One Newcastle. 2-1 two, Newcastle. I think if this had been a if this had been a forest, I think we might be looking at a forest win, but I think the uh St, uh, St. James's Park faithful will just get be enough to get them over the line. So 2-1 two, to two, Newcastle. All right, next up we go to the vitality. Bournemouth take on Fulham at home. Bournemouth in flying form at the moment with Fulham. Um, they were in good form, but they have lost their last two games, including at home to Burnley. So uh, a bit, bit, bit disappointing results in the past couple of games. Uh, I've gone for 2-1 to Bournemouth. Ben's gone for 3-1. Uh, I think just Bournemouth are riding a wave at the moment. And I can see them uh, the way, with the way they play as well. They play with intensity, high pressure. And I really like... I'm really starting to like the look of their forward line. I think it's got pace, it's got trickery, and then it's got the finishing ability of Solanke, who is now the second top goal scorer in the Premier League. So you add in, you add that into the mix, and I think Bournemouth have a really good opportunity of extending that winning run against the Fulham side, who are obviously a good team, but they just lack that firepower in the forward line, do they, to take advantage of some of their good plays. So I've gone for 2-1 to Bournemouth, but do you see Bournemouth continuing their winning run here, Brian? I most certainly do, and I actually see them keeping a clean sheet. Oh, I'm wow. going. I'm going two 0 Bournemouth. I think the the run of form they're in is not to be uh, overlooked. I really enjoy what they're doing. I really like. I actually really like their manager, who was under such scrutiny at the beginning, um, and is now starting to get a tune out of what his team is starting to understand and pull off what he needs. I'm going a two 0 Bormuth win. Yeah, Ira Ola doing an outstanding job um, for Bournemouth. Some of the football they play as well is absolutely brilliant. And he's really, um, something is really happening there at the moment with the form they're on. Um, considering he was one game away from the sack as well, uh, it's really astonishing. So, yeah, both gone for Bournemouth wins. Next up, Sheffield United versus Luton, a real six bottom, uh, bottom of the battle, six pointer here, bottom of the table. I've gone for nil nil. Ben's gone for one nil to Sheffield United. Um, been a bit of an uptick for Sheffield United since. 
since Chris Wilder was appointed. They um, they uh, they did get a brilliant draw away at Aston Villa last time out. They beat uh, Brentford 1-0 at home as well, although they do still sit bottom of the table on nine points. Luton, very strong at home, maybe not as good away from home, but they did beat Newcastle 1-0 um, last time out in what was a brilliant victory for them. I just see a very hard fought draw for both sides cancelling each other out. I just that I think both teams base themselves on strong defenses and I don't think either have a brilliant attack although Archer did get a goal and he's in good form. Um yep. but I think both teams are going to struggle to break each other down here so I've gone for nil nil. I'm struggling to work whether they go for a 1-0 Luton winner or 1-0. Uh I think I'm going to go on the same kind of lines of yourself and go one all. Sheffield United is a very, very hostile place to go to. Um, this is a proverbial relegation six-pointer. Uh, Fulham, uh, Fulham. Luton will have all the confidence in the world, and rightly so. And so should Sheffield United after getting a draw at Villa Park. Um, so they'll both be high up. I go one all. One all. If, uh, if Sheffield United do lose at home to Luton, that will open a six-point gap between them and Luton. And at that point, it's, look, it's going to look very difficult for Sheffield United, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. This is where they have that little thing. I mean, I think it's only two or three teams. If you're bottom at Christmas, only, I think, twice, three times maximum it's happened. Um, I think Sheffield United can be in serious trouble if they lose this game. Yeah, it's a real six-pointer here. Um, so I've got, yeah, I've gone for nil-nil. Both teams, maybe too, uh, in my opinion, will be too scared to lose rather than going for the win. Yeah. Uh, next up, Turf Moor. Burnley at home to Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool obviously looking to get back to winning ways after two consecutive draws uh, at home against Man United and Arsenal. Burnley, a real good morale-boosting win against Fulham away from home. So I, I feel like they're going to have their tails up a bit. They're going to uh, try and uh, find and ride some confidence so I do see them and they do play good football and I can see them you know causing Liverpool a bit of trouble but I just feel like Liverpool's firepower is just going to be way too much for Burnley and I just don't think they have the defence that will uh, uh, stand up to scrutiny here Okay I'm going to really I'm gonna, there's always seems to be one result on Boxing Day that throws the cats amongst the pigeons and I'm going for it to be this one I think 2-1 Burnley I've just got a feeling the home crowd, they've got a win. To, uh, and like you said, they haven't really pushed on since that 5 0 win. They got the result against Fulham. Uh, Liverpool obviously played in the Carabao Cup. So, oh, they uh, played in the Carabao uh, Cup semi final. Uh, obviously, they can rotate, but I've just got a funny feeling that there's going to be a shock on Boxing Day, and this is going to be it. So I'm going 2 1 Burnley. 2 1 Burnley. Wow, that would yep. be a mighty shock. And look, if Burnley do end up beating Liverpool, I mean, that would give them so much confidence when it comes to uh, uh, the second half of the season. And like, they'll, they're all of a sudden, maybe that fear of playing some of the Premier League teams will disappear if they do get a, a massive victory like that. So, I mean, I'll be mightily impressed. I'll be shocked if they can do it. I just feel like that defence, I just don't think it's good enough to repel what Liverpool have got to offer. But if they do win that, that'll be absolutely incredible. Um, next game is at Old Trafford and it's a big game for both teams Aston Villa go to Old Trafford so Man United play Aston Villa I've gone for 2-2 Ben has gone for 2-0 to Aston Villa um, obviously Villa disappointing draw at home Sheffield United they don't have a very good away record compared to their home record they've got one of the best home records in the league but their away record um they don't seem to have that same kind of intensity away from home at the moment. Man United are in all all manners of crisis. You know, four games without a goal uh, in all competitions. In the Premier League, it's four out of five games without a goal as well. Um, shocking performance against West Ham last time out. I just feel, I just get a feeling they're going to, sometimes when they really turn up the heat on Ten Hag, he pulls a performance out of the bag. Last time they were talking about him for the sack. He just pulled out a win against Chelsea at Old Trafford when they really needed it. And I think that coupled with Villa's poor away form, I can see them just just about getting a performance to get a result here. But I mean, if they lose again, it's tough to see where Ten Hag goes from there. But do you see do you see any chance of Man United getting a result here? I, I see the typical Manchester United thing happening here where Aston Villa will be leading 1-0. They'll go to injury time and Man, Man United will claw something at, at, at full time. I can't remember who it was recently when McTominay scored two headers. Brentford. That's the one. 
I've just got a feeling that's going to happen again, but only to, to rescue the point and probably, again, get Ten Hag out of trouble. Um, they seem to do it at Old Trafford all the time, don't they, recently? Mm. Old, Old Trafford... He, Although they did lose 3-0 well. to Bournemouth. They got, it should have been four as well, shouldn't it? Or they yeah. had a goal this loud. Um, yeah, I'm going for 1-1. 1-1 here. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, if Villa have got, obviously, if the Villa got serious aspirations of a title challenge, they probably need to go here and win. Albeit they're yeah. only one point behind Arsenal. So, like, honestly, you can't really uh, discount anyone uh, who's got that kind of points total at, that, at this stage. So, um, they're having, obviously, a fantastic season. I just th- I just feel like they're not as good away from home. So, I'm going for them to drop points here. Um, next up, we go to. Uh, Brentford, Brentford at home to Wolves. I've gone for one nil to Brentford. Ben's gone for two one. I just feel like it's two teams who who like to play transitional counter attacking football. I know Gary Neal is doing a, be- a good job, but I actually think Fra- Thomas Frank and Brentford are, are a bit better at doing that kind of thing than Wolves are. And I think at home, I know they're missing some key players, but I th- I can see um, them frustrating Wolves um, at home here, and I th- I can see. Um, even though they're on a run of three consecutive losses, I think they're going to want to turn that around going into Christmas. I can see them being very resolute and I can just see them scraping past uh, Brentford here. But do you think Wolves can go to Brentford and get a result? Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Thomas Frank. I actually wanted him to be the next Spurs manager before Ange. He was the one I, I, I really rate him. But they're not doing it this season. The thing's not right. Obviously, Tony has been out. They look good at the start. I'm going for Ben's fixture, just the reverse. I think it'll be 2-1 Wolves. Gone for I think two one away from Wolves. After the Chelsea game, I think um, I think they they have been really really underestimated this season, and decisions have gone against them. And I think Gary O'Neill's team leave with three points. Yeah, that could well be the case. Although it's important to remember, Brentford did have a week off on the weekend because they were set to play Man City, played the Club World Cup, so maybe they might be fresher legs. But I've gone for Brentford just to just to scrape it. Next up um, is Stanford Bridge, Chelsea against Crystal Palace, and Mauricio Pochettino under massive pressure. I've gone for him to relieve the pressure a tiny bit with a one nil win. I j- uh, Ben's gone for one one here though. He's gone for Palace to go to Stanford Bridge and get a point. Chelsea do seem to struggle against teams like Palace, who kind of uh, clog up the the centre of the pitch and, and frustrate them. I just think Palace, the way they kind of play, they're going to sit back. They're gonna, um, they're gonna, you know, try and build their way into the game. And I know Chelsea usually start fast in a lot of these games, so I think if Chelsea can get the lead, I can see them going on just to scrape it one 0 Albeit they're not, they're going to be without Palmer and Sterling, so it's going to make it a lot more difficult for Chelsea to use their quality. Um, I've got them to scrape it, but Ben's gone for one-one um, for Palace to get a result. Do you think that's likely? I think there's one more goal in the game than what Ben said. And I think it's going to the Eagles. I think, though, yeah, they, 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 I just think if Eze and Elise are playing together and start, and there is no Palmer and Sterling, we know for a fact, it's like their two creative are out and their two most creative could be in. And Chelsea are going to be on at home, they're going to be so nervous. The crowd is, I, I bet they were wishing this game was at Sellers Park. Um, I'm going. I'm sorry, Sammy. I'm going two uh, one Palace. Wow, that would be uh, if they lose at home to Palace off the back of some of the rocks they had recently. Um, it's going to be difficult to see Poch turning that around. But look, I know he's only nineteen games, eighteen games into into his tenure at the moment. So maybe we're judging him too early. But there are some managers, you know, you look at you look at Spurs and some other managers who have been in the job less. You look at how De Zerbi started at Brighton and things like that, and it. You know, it makes people think: Is Poch the right man? And I think if he if they do drop points again, it's you know it's only going to play into that narrative. But I've gone for him to scrape it one nil. But I don't know even if that result will convince Chelsea fans are going in the right direction just yeah. yet. Uh, next up is Goodison Park in what's going to be a very interesting game. Everton at home to Man City. Man City just coming back from the Club World Cup. We've both gone for 2-1 to Man City, so both going for a close game, but City just a shady. I think Everton are just full of confidence, even off the back of the Spurs loss. I don't think they're going to, they're going to lose any confidence over that because of the way they played and how they should have got a result. I think City will be a bit buoyed by the fact they got that, that Club World Cup 
Cup um, over the weekend. Haaland should be back in, in contention as well. I do see Everton making it really difficult for City, to be honest. I don't see it being uh, City having it their own way whatsoever. But I think City, even though it, it, Everton are in great form, I seem to having just enough for Everton. But uh, what, how do you see it? Going Desmond. Desmond. Going Des- You've got to remember, Rodri's out uh, from what I've seen, and they do not do well. Is, it, is Rodri. Rodri out? Yeah. Oh, Apparently that's he's out. true. He's going to be- uh, I, I saw, I saw it. I think it was announced after the FIFA, after the final. I think he's out for seven weeks or something. I don't know if it was fake news or something, but I saw something. Seven weeks, or something uh, like that. That would have been big news. I don't know if that's true. I, I, I think I saw something uh, that Rob Brees out. I'm sure I saw it. Um, I, but again, it could have been clickbait or fake news. But I'm sure I saw something that Rob Brees going to be out for a little while. Um, and they don't normally do well at Manchester City, uh, uh, Goodison. Mm. I don't know what it is. I and I think Goodison right now. You got to look their last two away uh, home games, New apart from the Carabao Cup, Chelsea and uh, Newcastle, they've disposed of, and they are good sides, or at least with uh, star players. And I can see, I can see uh, Everton picking up a point here, two two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are there are definitely noises about the injury. No one's confirmed exactly how long he's out for. Um, but he did apparently sustain quite a bad one in the final. That is true. So if he is definitely out for this game or for the foreseeable, that would be a massive, uh, that would be massive for Man City and the title race if that was to happen. But we'll have to wait for any confirmation. Uh, we haven't had any official confirmation about how bad it really is. Um, so yeah, we we'll have to wait and see. Uh, next up is Brighton against Spurs at the Amex. I've actually gone for two-two in this one. Ben has gone for three-one to Spurs. Brighton can't seem to get much consistency um, at the moment um, with how they play. Although they still play really good football, um, I see them being able to um, kind of play through us a bit. Sometimes I think we're going to be very open. They're going to be very attacking. I also see us being able to play through them as well. I see yep. I see us getting a lot of joy going forward and being able to create chances against this uh, Brighton team. Um, I was th- I was feeling I think a lot of it could come down to who just has a weaker defence. I do think Brighton does have a weaker defence, but I just think home advantage could prove difficult. They have proven to be quite difficult to play against away from home this season. So, and with some of the injuries we have, I think it's going to be difficult for us to go and win the game. So I've gone 2-2. Um, how do you think Bob Spurs can go there and win, Brian? I think we can, but obviously we still don't know what's happening with Romero at time of recording. Mm. So that could be pivotal to to anything. Um, I do think we do do okay at Brighton, um, but they're always tough games. They're not. There's not been one easy one. Um, and I am going to go in between. I'm going to go for two one Tottenham win. Um, I just think we'll have just enough. Mm. The, uh, Brighton have only lost one of their nine games at home, so they're always difficult to beat, albeit they've only won one of their last five with four draws. So um, they haven't been able to pick up um, many wins in recent weeks at home. But, you know, they have drawn uh, at home to the likes of um, um, uh, Liverpool uh, in in recent weeks. So uh, I've just, I just couldn't split it, so I went for 2-2. And the last game of the weekend is Arsenal at home to West Ham in a London derby. Obviously, Arsenal need to win to keep up that top spot. Uh, West Ham going good in sixth place, beating Man United last time out as well. Did, did, did go to Spurs and win recently as well. So they'll have no fear going to Arsenal. But we've both gone for 2-1 to Arsenal. I do think it's going to be a game where Arsenal are going to have to be patient. They're going to have to pick their moments to, to, to break down this West Ham team. I can see West Ham with their firepower maybe having a couple of counter punches, but Arsenal have been very good defensively this season. So I can see them keeping West Ham arm's length. And I just think when push comes to shove, the players like Saka and Martinelli and Odegaard will have enough to just to get enough quality uh, to win the game. So I've gone for 2-1 here. But what do you reckon, Brian? Yeah, I'm going to stick with you and Ben on this one. Um, it's the Declan Rice derby, isn't it? Um uh, obviously, they, they are West Ham knocked them out of the Carabao Cup very convincingly, but this is a different animal and at, and at the Emirates. And unfortunately, I can't see anything but an Arsenal win, although I would love anything but. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be difficult for West Ham to go there and get a point, but 
look, West Ham are in sixth place and they they um, do decent. Uh, they have done some de- got some decent results away from home against some big teams. So one completely them count them out. Oh, but if Arsenal do win, they'll def they'll have they'll be top after 19 games and that'll be a massive uh, thing for them after you know last season changing for the title. Definitely have indications they'll be going hard for it again. Uh, last uh, point of call is the star men. I've gone for Christian in Kunku in this one who made his debut today for get uh, for Chelsea scored a goal uh, and looked really bright had a shot clear off the line as well I do think he's going to get his first start for Chelsea against Palace at home and I'm backing him to score Ben has gone for Richarlison at the Amex uh, so he's banking on him to carry on his really good goal scoring form um, if you are a betting man who would be more likely to score Richarlison or Nkunku well, well, I have to say, because of your microphone, Ceci, I thought some of the cuckoo's hair was in front of him, but then I realised it's the uh, the circle of your uh, <laughs> microphone. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I, I, I think uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick with our lad. I'm going to stick with uh, Richarlison carrying on his run. Um, I think he will get a goal against Brighton. But if I had to pick someone, it would be Dominic Solanke. Dominic Solanke, he would be your he would be your bet for somebody who's going yeah. to score this weekend. Yeah. All right. Well, that is it for all the Premier League predictions. Let me know your predictions in the comment section below. I hope you're all enjoying a very merry Christmas. That is absolutely deadlocked going into this weekend between me and Ben. So it's set to be an absolute another cracker this midweek. Um, enjoy your holidays. Have a good time with the family. Hope everyone uh, gets some nice gifts, and I hope everyone has a really good Christmas. We'll all see you very very soon. Like, subscribe and comment and we'll see you next time.